It's my pleasure then to introduce Ben Schramm uh, for a presentation on Michigan's forestry assistance program and an update. Ben, uh, I think you've got control and uh, all set, ready to go. Yeah, I think so. Okay, fire uh, away. See if the, the slide advances here. And We got to do that wiggle mouse and click once and see if it'll, there you go. Give it a click. There you are. Off and running. All right, sounds good. I'll kind of go back here. All right, so I, I appreciate the opportunity to, to uh, talk to everyone a little bit about the Private Forest Lands Initiative. Again, as uh, as Ray mentioned, my name is Ben Schramm. I work for the Michigan Department of Agriculture and Rural Development. I'm the Forestry Assistance Program there, and um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about the entire Private Forest Lands Initiative over at MDARD. Or I should, I guess I should say I'm going to talk about two thirds of the effort uh, because we got 10 minutes here and, you know, our, our agency has had some type of private lands forestry program for the past 35 or 40 years in different, in different iterations and um, whether it was on purpose or on accident, um, you know, our, our state's Department of Natural Resources has really been the, the uh, public land managing agency which has left a bit of a had left a bit of a void in private lands management, which I think works out really well for our agency to uh, to address because of our work with uh, private landowners in the way of producers and farmers and uh, and our work with with conservation districts. So I'm going to talk about two of our three programs. I'm going to talk about the forestry assistance program, uh, and then I'm going to talk about Michigan's qualified forest program. We do have a third program called the Forest Wetlands and Habitat System of the Michigan Agriculture Environmental Assurance Program, uh, but I'm going to have to leave that one out today for just the sake of time. Uh, I wanted to first mention kind of what our opportunity is in Michigan uh, for, for forest management, especially family forest management. You know, Michigan is a, is a pretty forested state and you're looking statewide at about 20 million acres of uh, of forests throughout both peninsulas and uh, 9 million of those acres are on family forests. Those family forests are owned by uh, a little bit more than 400,000 individual landowners and so there's a lot of uh, a lot of family dynamics, a lot of uh, traditions, a lot of values that are all mixed into those 9 million acres and a, a study by Michigan State University uh, I guess a few years ago now suggested that um, only 20% of the private land at the time in Michigan was, uh, was, actively, uh, was actively managed. So that, that sort of leads way to the Forestry Assistance Program, which is a, a technical assistance program administered by uh, grants that are, are given from our agency to conservation districts to hire a professional forester um, we currently have 19 grants out in the countryside that cover about 46 of Michigan's 83 counties, and uh, most of the most of the the foresters cover between two and three counties. Um, there there was a, a a grant that covered about four or five counties in the past, and that has since uh, that since changed. These foresters provide uh, one on one, no cost assistance in the form of site visits, um, in-office contacts, and those sorts of things. So they're able to walk the property with these landowners free of charge and help them identify really what their uh, what their goals are, what their values are for owning that piece of forest. You know, forests in Michigan are often either associated with a farm or there's a recreational property in the northern part of the state that's all forested. And there's often a variety of uh, competing and complementary uh, values that uh, that these landowners have to grapple with, whether it's uh, the cost of ownership and generating revenue through timber harvest or the cost of ownership through taxes, uh, wildlife habitat, uh, what kind of wildlife habitat, you know, whether it's part of a home or, or just a um, vacation prop property or if it's part of a family legacy. Um, so that one-on-one -on -one interaction is really the hallmark of our program. Um, probably the next most important service that we provide these family forest owners is a pretty robust referral program 
to both uh, private sector service providers and public sector uh, conservation programs. And so as an example, if, if one of our foresters meets out on a landowner's property and, and after, um, after a, a conversation and a walk through the woods, they decide, decide that a forest management plan is the, is the uh, next best uh, course of action, then our forester can actually provide uh, a direct request to the uh, private sector service providers in, in that area and solicit responses for that landowner so the landowner doesn't have to wade through lists of, of service providers or the yellow pages or, or things like that. Um, that also helps us maintain a really healthy relationship with the private sector. We have to be really uh, really careful not to, um, not to engage in activities that otherwise are offered for a fee by either industry foresters or loggers or consulting foresters. And that referral process helps us uh, helps us maintain that positive relationship. We also conduct outreach events locally, you know, and those those things range anywhere from uh, a snowshoe hike in the woods to learn to identify trees to uh, in class discussions about you know federal income tax provisions for timber harvest revenue. Uh, to how to grow mushrooms in your woods. You know, the, the topics are really quite diverse and it's all geared towards getting folks in the door, teaching them a little bit something about forestry and forest management, but ultimately getting that contact to then get on site with that landowner and start addressing uh, resource concerns and conservation values on their property. Uh, they also promote a variety of other programs like uh, the American Tree Farm System, um, you know, federal farm bill programs and, and those types of things. Before I move on uh, to, to the next program, I did want to mention that uh, over the past year or so, I guess we're still kind of working on it, we've developed a, a 10 year master plan, really a 10 year strategic plan that's designed to outline the next 10 years of how the forestry assistance program is, is going to be delivered. And we, uh, we work pretty hard to, to, to figure out what our mission, vision, values, and our strategic priorities are for the next 10 years. You know, we did a good job over the first seven years of this program, sort of building infrastructure and, and building partnerships and, and, and those types of things. Uh, but I think what we lacked was sort of a, di a direction for the future. And okay, now that we've done all of this stuff, how do we best serve the family forest owners uh, in Michigan moving forward? And so that master plan is really gonna help us help us hold ourselves accountable and help our partners hold us accountable as well. The next program I wanted to talk about was is a, is a program called the Qualified Forest Program. So this is a, a tax incentive program for family forest owners who meet a, uh, a certain threshold of, of size, of parcel size and, and forest productivity. And what it does is uh, in exchange for a landowner having a forest management plan developed and agreeing to follow the recommendations in that management plan, they receive a uh, reduction in their property taxes. And uh, in a lot of cases, that reduction in property taxes can be upwards of 40% uh, of, of, of their local taxation, which, which for a lot of folks can be pretty substantial and, and does a good job at keeping family forests in forests. Um, there's a provision that they have to manage their timber resource uh, through timber harvesting. Um, and, and it also makes the land affordable for new owners, which is, you know, I, I don't want to get too deep into uh, Michigan tax code here, but um, essentially, it, you know, when a, a, a property that is enrolled in the Qualified Forest Program is sold sometime in the future, those taxes uh, for the new landowner remain at a, at a lower rate so that uh, in a lot of times it makes owning forest land possible at all. Um, our, our conservation districts are actually written right into the statute um, and that they have a role in verifying whether a parcel meets those minimum thresholds. So for example, you know, parcels that are between 20 and 40 acres in size have to be at least 80% stocked with uh, 
productive forest, which is a just a term from the, the statute that's that's pretty well defined. And and parcels that are 40 acres and up have to be at least 50% stocked with productive forests. And so the statute calls on the conservation district employees to to make that determination and, and tell our agency whether that land is eligible for enrollment in the program. So just to have a uh, have kind of a perspective on, on what those program metrics look like, um, you know, we've got about 665,000 acres enrolled in the program. And honestly, that's of January of this year because it sort of operates on a tax year. So we'll have well over uh, 700,000 acres enrolled in this program uh, after January 1st. To give you a little bit of information there for um, 2019's timber harvest data, there was um, everything is, is sort of reported back in, in cords for volume wise. And so over 90,000 cords of wood was, was harvested off of qualified forest program land in 2019. And, and that was almost $4 million worth of, of timber value, spe uh, specifically stumpage for landowners. Uh, in 2019, I think the enrollment consisted of 604 new forest management plans being developed specifically for enrollment in this tax program. Uh, and what's, what's really important about uh, enrollment in this program is that enrollment is actually tied to the technical assistance funding for the, the forestry assistance program that I talked about earlier. So um, landowners are, are reduced this proportion of their uh, of their property tax that's enrolled and then they actually uh, through a state subsidy they actually sort of pay back a, a tax equivalent fee uh, that that slowly populates this restricted revenue in the state budget that funds the conservation district foresters. So I know that was that's kind of a whirlwind. Uh, I appreciate everyone uh, giving me the opportunity to talk a little bit about family forest management in Michigan, and I'm happy to take some questions if there's time. Thanks, Ben. And uh, yeah, we do have a question came in. How does your forestry assistance uh, program interact or dovetail, if it does? with your state's public forest lands management agency. And in the Washington state from the asker of the question, uh, it's their Department of Natural Resource Agency. So have you got a good uh, coordination going on with those state conservation forestry folks? Yeah, I guess there's there's uh, maybe a couple answers to that question. So the first one is that the, the state managed uh, forest land, those uh, those foresters and those land managers, they do have two and a half people that, uh, in, the, in the entire agency that work on family forest issues. And so uh, we do have some scattered service foresters uh, around the state that, uh, that help provide just a little bit of assistance or, or, or fill in some, some niche gaps. Um, probably one of, the, one of the biggest ways that our Department of Natural Resources uh, provides assistance to the conservation district foresters is through these local forestry advisory committee meetings. And I, and I didn't I didn't mention this just for, for the sake of time, but it is really a, a huge component to our program where uh, each grantee, each conservation district forester convenes a local uh, advisory committee made up of uh, private sector foresters and loggers, uh, Department of Natural Resources foresters, um, you know, NGO groups in the area, anyone who really has a stake in family forest management or just generally forest management in that service area. And they convene them a couple times a year to, to just make sure that everyone's on the same page and everyone knows kind of what, um, what direction the program locally is taking, what resource concerns that they're trying to address and how they're best interacting with public agencies as well as private business. So. Uh, oftentimes, our DNR foresters participate in those meetings, especially where there's a state forest locally, um, to help coordinate, you know, timber sales for small landowners and help them identify when they're doing invasive species treatment on this on the state forest and um, mm -hmm. things of that nature. So, so there there is there is quite a bit of collaboration between our agencies. 